The Dragon spacecraft is going to be decommissioned immediately by SpaceX, Elon Musk, and more importantly, this is all because of Donald Trump. Actually decommission the Dragon, how will those astronauts on the ISS currently ever get back? In a shocking twist, Elon Musk has thrown the future of space exploration into turmoil by threatening to decommission SpaceX's Crew Dragon program, proving once again that if there's one thing faster than a Falcon 9, it's a Musk controversy. When Musk said he would start decommissioning SpaceX's Dragon program, that's the only way NASA can send astronauts to the International Space Station. The Crew Dragon program, once a symbol of innovation, it is now on the brink of collapse, leaving the entire space industry reeling. As Musk's ultimatum looms, former ally Donald Trump adds fuel to the fire, hinting at pulling federal subsidies that have fueled Musk's ventures. What began as a policy disagreement now feels more like a messy political breakup, with passive aggressive funding threats and public unfollowing threatening to crash more than just satellites. Okay, well, fair enough. If it does, though, is there any private or public entity that is able to fill the SpaceX void, Keith? Uh, no. This is this is a one. There's no def no backup here. Uh, there's no other way to get people into space. So what happens if Musk follows through with his threat? And if he does, what could that mean for NASA and the entire space industry? In the ever-evolving theater of American power and personality, a fresh chapter opened in June 2025, one that pitted Silicon Valley's most unpredictable titan against the nation's most polarizing political force. It began with a single word, abomination. Elon Musk, never one to withhold an opinion or a flamethrower, publicly denounced President Trump's $2.6 trillion. One big, beautiful bill. Musk's verdict? A disgusting abomination. Likening it to a fiscal black hole packed with unhinged spending, cartoonish tax cuts, and enough pork to start a barbecue chain. The statement sent shockwaves through Washington. Trump predictably fired back with his characteristic flair. Speaking to reporters outside the West Wing, he accused Musk of losing his mind and floated the idea of stripping his companies. Today, the president declared that Elon was wearing thin. I asked him to leave. I took away his EV mandate that forced everyone to buy electric cars that nobody else wanted, that he knew for months I was going to do, and he just went crazy. Tesla and SpaceX of their federal lifelines claiming that they can save billions and billions of dollars. We're gonna to have to cut the EV mandate because that's billions and billions of dollars, and it really is unfair. But Musk wasn't finished. In a stunning and unexpected move, he announced plans to decommission SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft, the primary US vehicle used for transporting astronauts to the International Space Station. This threat left the space industry checking the fine print on their backup plans. Spoiler, there aren't many. The implications were immediate and severe. NASA operations thrown into limbo, global space agencies caught off guard, and astronauts already aboard the ISS left uncertain about how and when they'd return to Earth. With the space community left scrambling in chaos, crisis discussions have flooded Washington and Cape Canaveral. NASA and Pentagon officials are urgently accelerating efforts to diversify launch options beyond SpaceX after Musk's announcement to decommission Dragon raised alarm among astronauts and engineers. Meanwhile, international partners are stepping into the breach. The European Space Agency has quietly offered Ariane rocket support for uncrewed supply missions, though it isn't cleared for crew transport. And in a geopolitical twist, even Russia's Roscosmos is being consulted, reviving dormant discussions on Soyuz seat swaps despite U.S.-Russia tensions. For astronauts aboard the ISS, the situation has shifted from routine to tense. Some officials describe the scenario as a political flashpoint jeopardizing crew rotation and station resupply. The backup plans they're crafting, from Starliner crewed missions to European cargo flights, are complex and high stakes. What began as a budgetary spat has mutated into a full-blown aerospace crisis. The Musk-Trump rift has detonated across aerospace corridors, financial markets, and diplomatic back channels alike. SpaceX relies on roughly $22 billion in government contracts and controls around 80% of U.S. satellite launches, making any disruption potentially catastrophic. And beneath it all, 
One question looms larger than any orbit. Is America watching its space future get caught in a very terrestrial fight? As NASA explores options, leaning on Boeing, European partners, and even Russia, the drama surrounding Dragon and Starliner becomes more than a boardroom spat. It is a crisis unfolding live with global implications for the space age. This extreme turmoil in the space industry shows how strong Elon Musk's grip on modern spaceflight truly is. With one announcement, he can jolt NASA, rattle international partners, and send private aerospace firms into crisis mode. His influence reaches beyond rockets. It adjusts policy, shifts budgets, and even nudges astronaut bedtime schedules at the International Space Station. As the CEO of SpaceX, Elon Musk has fundamentally reshaped space travel with a bold, sometimes brash, vision. At the core of this revolution is a deceptively simple idea, reusability. Since SpaceX's Falcon 9 boosters first stuck a landing in 2015, rocket reusability has gone from fantasy to factory standard. The cost of orbital access has plummeted and so have expectations, at least for how slowly space agencies used to move. SpaceX now handles more than 80% of U.S. satellite launches and aims for a staggering 170 launches in 2025. If that number sounds high, remember, Musk also runs a car company, a brain chip lab, and a satellite internet empire on the side. Time apparently bends differently in his orbit. At the center of Musk's next act is Starship, a towering stainless steel vehicle meant to haul humans to the moon, Mars, or wherever the Wi-Fi holds up. Its third test flight in 2024 achieved orbital velocity and partial recovery, with more tests queued for this year. NASA has already tapped Starship as the lunar lander for its Artemis missions, placing federal trust and taxpayer funds in Musk's hands yet again. SpaceX is now among the most valuable private companies on Earth. The company's meteoric rise is reflected in its valuation. A looming share tender could soon peg SpaceX at around $350 billion, a 67% jump since mid-2024. to Private investors and ARC Invest's Kathy Wood even see its enterprise value exceeding $2.5 trillion by 2030, fueled by Starlink's exponential growth and government contracts. Beyond rockets, Starlink, SpaceX's satellite internet constellation, continues to expand rapidly, launching over 250 satellites per month and reaching global broadband milestones. This broadband boom supports the economics of future Musk-led missions by creating a steady cash flow. But influence isn't just measured in dollars. Musk's influence extends across industries. Tesla, Neuralink, and now Starlink, all converging to reinforce his position as a tech and space visionary. His leadership and SpaceX's success have sparked a new era of competition. Blue Origin is racing to prove relevance, Europe is accelerating Ariane 6, and even China is mirroring SpaceX's model, though without the memes. Yet critics point out systemic risks, sky-high valuations, massive government dependence, and Musk's unpredictable persona pose serious challenges. Any misstep with Starship, such as a test failure or funding issue, could ripple through the industry. But if Musk's reach is vast, so too are the risks of over-reliance. That reality came into sharp focus when Musk threatened to decommission SpaceX's Dragon spacecraft. And this threat wasn't trivial. Just months earlier, in March 2025, Crew Dragon had swooped in to rescue NASA astronauts stranded for nine months aboard the ISS, a dramatic reminder of how essential Dragon has become. The SpaceX Crew Dragon, from its 2019 uncrewed Demo-1 test to ferrying astronauts under NASA's commercial crew program, has become a cornerstone of America's human spaceflight capabilities. After the space shuttle program ended in 2011, the U.S. spent nearly a decade relying on Russian Soyuz capsules to transport astronauts to the International Space Station, a situation that felt more Cold War than cutting edge. That changed in 2020, when Crew Dragon launched its first astronauts from U.S. soil, marking a turning point not just in NASA's operations, but in the country's geopolitical posture in low Earth orbit. Since then, Dragon has conducted regular crewed missions, supported international collaborations, and most recently rescued two NASA astronauts stuck on the ISS for nine months after Boeing's Starliner ran into what can only be described as a long list of technical difficulties. 
So when Elon Musk threatened to retire the Dragon Fleet during his feud with former President Trump, it was like threatening to take away the only bridge in and out of town. NASA, already rattled by Starliner's delays and crew scheduling uncertainties, found itself staring down the uncomfortable possibility of once again depending on Moscow to reach the station. Within hours, emergency meetings were held. Pentagon and NASA officials began reviewing fallback options. Boeing's Starliner, plagued by delays, thruster malfunctions, and helium leak issues from its June 2024 crewed test, is still awaiting full crew certification, earliest expected. 2026. The European Space Agency, while offering cargo support via Ariane rockets, cannot send astronauts. And Roscosmos? Still politically complicated to say the least, the moment revealed an uncomfortable truth. One man, one company, and one capsule had quietly become indispensable. And when that man is Elon Musk, the boundary between strategic asset and strategic liability starts to blur. If SpaceX pulled the plug on Dragon, NASA would face a strategic nightmare. Dragon isn't just a spacecraft, it's the only American crewed transportation system to the ISS since the space shuttle's retirement. Without it, NASA would be forced to rely on foreign partners again, most notably Russia's Soyuz, to transport astronauts. That shift could compromise national security and blur the lines of technological sovereignty. In a world where space is both a frontier and a venue for geopolitical signaling, depending on another nation, even an ally on something as earth-shaking as human spaceflight, carries heavy implications. While Musk eventually walked back the threat, the incident was enough to set nerves jangling from Houston to Brussels. Critics noted that Musk's swift retraction, just hours later, was more damage control than resolution. In the grand arc of space history, Crew Dragon has indeed re-established American leadership in crewed spaceflight. But this brief political standoff served as a sobering reminder, technological independence is only as steady as the hand behind the launch button. But behind the spectacle of rockets, tweets, and splashdowns, a quieter reality takes shape. Elon Musk may command the launch pad, but much of his ascent has been fueled by a government checkbook. And no one has stamped that ledger more aggressively than Donald Trump. It's one thing for Elon Musk to wield rockets, but when the federal government becomes your fuel tank, power dynamics shift dramatically. Under the Trump administration, SpaceX secured approximately $21 billion in government contracts since 2008, largely from NASA and the Department of Defense. That financing wasn't charity, it was strategic investment in national security, science, and America's global image. The feud that erupted in June 2025 exposed just how tangled that relationship has become. In response to Musk's public rebuke of the one big beautiful bill, Trump threatened to pull federal support $22 billion worth of contracts and subsidies in a bid to save billions and billions of dollars. That included a $5 billion deal for Crew Dragon missions, along with high-stakes projects like lunar missions, classified satellite launches, broadband for remote regions, and even missile defense systems dramatically dubbed Golden Dome, which sounds less like defense tech and more like a Bond villain's Vegas resort. Losing that funding wouldn't just bruise egos, it would punch holes in Musk's business model. Musk himself admitted that NASA alone accounts for $1.1 billion of SpaceX's projected $15.5 billion in 2025 revenue. Add in Pentagon deals, and the government's role in his empire becomes difficult to ignore. At this point, Musk has started to look more like a very well-paid federal employee than a hot-headed billionaire with a side hustle in space. In fact, the consequences are already showing. The Musk-Trump eruption didn't just shake the space sector, it rattled Tesla's stock too. Following the feud's intensification in early June, Tesla shares tumbled roughly 14%, erasing around $152 billion in market value in a single day. That slump was the stock's steepest since the early days of the pandemic. Analysts quickly downgraded Tesla, with Argus and Baird moving it from buy to hold, warning that the political turbulence and Musk's unpredictable behavior inject too much uncertainty into the company's outlook. Although shares have partially recovered, boosted by optimism around the upcoming robo-taxi launch, Tesla remains down around 20% year-to-date. Experts note this paradox underscores the tightrope of public-private partnerships. Musk's companies flourish when aligned with government goals and falter when political winds shift. 
Critics like Steve Bannon have gone further, arguing nearly 90% of SpaceX's revenue comes from federal contracts and calling for nationalization. 90%, I think it's 90% of SpaceX's revenues come from the government contracts, okay? But lawmakers remain hesitant. Boeing and Blue Origin lack the scale or consistent performance to replace SpaceX anytime soon. And given candidate attention on China's space ambitions, severing ties would jeopardize Artemis, ISS crew rotations, Pentagon satellite deployments, and broader U.S. influence. Public markets and Putin-era cash-strapped countries are watching closely. Trump's brand of leverage may rattle Musk. But for now, federal funding remains the booster engine powering SpaceX's dominance and tethering corporate ambition tightly to political favor. Public reaction to the Musk-Trump clash has been split down the middle. Some see a genuine collision of egos, a billionaire sparring with a former president. Others suspect a strategy at play, both men perhaps staging the spectacle to sway policy or public sentiment. A YouGov poll reveals that 52% of Americans prefer not to pick a side, while 28% support Trump and only 8% side with Musk, highlighting widespread public ambivalence. Meanwhile, Morning Consult finds Musk's favorability among Republicans plunged 19 points during the feud, a sign that his political capital may be surprisingly fragile. The media fueled the drama, too. Commentary ranges from calling this duel alien versus predator for political nerds to speculating whether Musk's posts were calculated moves tied to XAI loan efforts or Trump's tactics to threaten contract funding as leverage. In fact, Musk later expressed regret over some of his comments, describing them as excessive, a rare sign of self-awareness that undercuts theories of a fully choreographed show. Still beneath the memes and press cycles, many believe something more deliberate may be unfolding, one that has less to do with emotion and more to do with long-term positioning. Both Musk and Trump possess deep, complex relationships with federal power, especially where funding and regulatory privileges are concerned. Their public feud may well be theater designed to influence policy, shape public opinion, or secure political advantage. Take, for example, Musk's brief foray into impeachment rhetoric against Trump, followed days later by a deletion of those posts and a soft retraction. That about face, critics suggest is less flip-flopping and more strategic repositioning, designed to remind followers of his influence without closing doors. Trump, by contrast, holds the ultimate leverage, the power of the purse. With control over a multi-billion dollar contract portfolio, he delivers very real consequences wrapped in loud confidence, nudging policy in his direction with the subtlety of a jumbo jet. Across both sides, the volatility continues. Musk's flirtation with forming a third-party America party signals political ambitions beyond private enterprise. Trump, meanwhile, has dropped hints of reconciliation, but only on his terms. In this unfolding drama, the feud reads less like an ideological showdown and more like two chess masters playing on public squares, measuring influence, signaling power, and shaping downstream alliances. For now, the narrative is fluid and the motivations cryptic. But one thing is clear, this is more than a clash of personalities. It's a high-stakes positioning game with far-reaching implications for technology, policy, and the future of public-private collaboration. So what do you think? Is this a genuine power struggle or political theater? Are Musk and Trump really at odds or playing the long game together? Let us know your thoughts in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit the bell so you don't miss what comes next in this unfolding saga. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next one.